Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is uh, Father Mark Prill, the pastor of St. Joseph in Erie. I keep introducing myself because it seems like we're making more friends via social media. And that's why I say welcome, though, through this time to be part of our parish as well. And one of the things I've been doing, though, is doing a lot of prayer even more, especially, though, when we heard what the governor of Michigan's decision, though, with the stay home, stay safe uh, executive order that she signed yesterday that would in effect for today. And uh, before I get to that, though, I just want to thank a few people as well, though, too. As you know, on Saturday, I thank the school staff and everything, just getting things rolling and everything as well with the teaching the kids at home, setting up the different programs and everything as well. I just want to say thank you again for all the hard work because I hear from some of the students and I see occasionally a teacher around here where they come in to pray with the church being open still. So thank you for all the hard work to all the teachers and to the parents as well, though, too. I know there is a lot of work that goes into everything there as well. But uh, also, though, I want to thank though, uh, the parish staff as well. They did a lot of work, though, especially the last uh, few days leading up to the executive order as well from our governor. And one of the things people are asking, you know, what does it mean for our parish as well, though, too? I, had, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, a lot of things, but I thought I'll go over some of the general principles that the archbishop gave us. Uh, first off, though, just so that you know, the parish offices are closed now. Uh, the staff, though, that are working at home are working at home and everything as well. So if you need to reach them, though, reach them through email if you have to. That'll be the only way. We will occasionally have someone come in, though, to do a few various things. But other than that, though, the offices are closed, the parish offices. Uh, also as well, though, too, just to let you know, tied to that, the church is still open for private prayer. That's the hours for adoration are still as normal, uh, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I encourage you to go as well, though, too. But also, though, with how the things are right now with the coronavirus and maybe you feel fearful about coming or anything as well. And maybe you're on the list, though, and everything to come for a certain hour. Don't be afraid to call. You could call me or some member of the team as well. And just being that I'm the only one in the office, I can't guarantee how quickly I return my phone calls or my emails because I'm still running a million miles a minute, but I'll try to return that stuff as quick as I can. And don't be afraid to call the other staff members if you have any questions as well, because they'll be happy to help though in any way they can as well via phone or email as well. And one of the charges though that the archbishop gave me though as a priest and all priests is that we should keep the churches open, but also keep them clean as well. So I'm working on a procedure though, that you make sure they're clean even more. So that way we're open up for prayer. And of course, so people are safe though too. So they don't have to worry about getting sick or anything like that. So just be mindful of that though. And like I said, if you have any doubts or if you wanna maybe not come for your adoration hour for, for whatever reason, don't be afraid to call me or someone on the team as well too. Also, though, if you have questions about funerals, weddings, and baptisms, and everything like that, instead of going over the whole thing on video, what the guidelines are for the diocese, just call. It'll be easier to talk one-on-one -on -one than instead of doing a general blanket, because there are very uh, strict guidelines that the Archdiocese gave us when it comes to that. Also, just so that you're aware, Mass will still be streamed live as well every day. And we're doing our, and we're honoring all the mass intentions that every day as well, as you may have noticed. So we're still praying and we're praying for the people of the parish as well too. So don't be afraid to check us out on our live stream like you are now, pass the word. And they don't even have to be members of the parish. Anybody you know, whether they're Catholic, non-Catholic, no religion at all, don't be afraid to share this and pass it on. Because I think just, Feeling that comfort with the Lord is something that we need more than ever. Also, though, speaking of when it comes to Mass and everything as well, as you may have heard, though, the, the Easter and Holy Week celebrations are going to be done in private, which means, though, it bugs me even to have to say this, probably for the first time in 200 years in the history of this parish, there'll be no public celebration, though, for Holy Week. However, what we're going to be doing, though, is we'll be streaming it. Again, 
we're working on getting better, well, actually getting internet into the church and everything, better quality cameras like the one we're using now and everything, just so that you could hear us better and see better so you could feel even more a part of the liturgy as well. I'll be working with the deacon, though, to come up with a plan because the diocese gave us guidelines as well for that. And when it comes to Easter and everything, I know many of you have been coming here for many years, some your whole life. Some of you may even come back in town just to celebrate Easter and Holy Week. Watch the videos, watch the live stream. While not, while you're not, while you may not be physically there, you'll still feel part of the community and you'll see the church that you love. And I encourage you to do that. And there's ways though on the website though that we found as well that you can uh, watch it on Facebook and still not be a member of Facebook. Now that I probably said that, it may change the rules, but hopefully they don't. But there's a way, though, a roundabout way to watch it as well. You did, we, we have it set up. You just click the link. It says, do you want to be a member of Facebook? You say no. You click videos, and you can watch it, and you can watch it live many times as well. So that's how Holy Week's going to be. We'll have a more of a Holy Week schedule of mass times and service times as it gets closer because it's going to take a lot of plan, strategic planning to do this as well. So I'll keep everybody in the loop with that as well. Also, though, too, some other things as well. Some people ask about private confession. Uh, I have heard actually a lot of confessions, though, since all this has started. So I haven't stopped hearing confessions or anything like that. Uh, normally on Tuesdays, there's confessions. I'm not going to do them today, mainly because I want to come up with a way, though, that protects all of us, though, for so none of us will be exposed or risk getting ill. So it might turn into a drive by, drive through service as well. Uh, what we could do, though, is I'll keep you posted, but I will keep honor the normal times that we have at Saturday at 10, and I'll go until it's over. Uh, just be ready, though. It might be in, through car. It might be different ways. So I haven't figured it out yet, but I'll make sure, though, to get word to you guys as well. Also, for the anointing of the sick, if there's someone's actively dying, of course, uh, if the hospitals allow it, I'll come there and anoint as well, but only if they're actively dying as well. And one of the things, too, because we have other sacraments coming up as well, confirmation and uh, first communions. Uh, confirmations uh, uh, scheduled for the remainder of 2020 are suspended until further notice. Then they'll look at maybe scheduling a different time as well, because I believe ours was in April sometime. And also about first communions as well. Uh, we're going to suspend those as well until it's safe for, because we want to have a big celebration because I know many family members like to come to that. So that's what's going to happen with that as well. Also, though, there's other things that we have going on. Uh, don't forget, though, form.org. There's a link on the web page. We'll get one on Facebook soon. I don't know when yet. And all you do is just click, click it, sign up. That's it. You don't have to pay anything. So make sure to do that as well. We'll still post a bulletin online. Really, there's not much going to be changing, just maybe the readings of the week, because I know some people like to know that, and some other things as well. That'll be going as well. Um, the letter I've been writing, it seems like forever, trying to write forever, because everything's been changing five every five minutes, will be going out either tomorrow or the next day. There'll be some prayers in there, though, of how to make a spiritual communion. There'll be other things as well. Uh, also, though, a lot of people are asking about collections as well, though, too. Of, co I've, I've, of course, if you're able to still support the parish as well, though, too. I know times are hard as well, but we still have bills and everything to pay, and we have employee as well, and we're based on your donations as well. I just ask you to be as generous as you can. You can either drop them in the mail or drop it in the mail slot. Or one of the things we've been working on, though, it's actually live on our webpage now, is online giving. You can sign up that way as well, so you don't have to worry about going to the post office or anything like that. You can do it at home. So I just pray and ask you to be as generous and supportive as you can, because like you guys, we have bills to pay, too, and I just ask you to be as generous as you can. And really, that's the biggest stuff that I have, though, just the updates with that. It seems like a lot. It seems like everything's changed since yesterday or even in a week like our world's been turned upside down we hear all these different numbers of people getting sick it seems like it's going up up and forever 
And that's what it feels like. But I think the biggest thing, though, even more than ever, is to turn ourselves over to the Lord. And one of the things I love, though, is history. And yesterday when I was walking around, I had those minutes. I was thinking, man, what am I going to do now? I mean, I have to try to figure stuff out to reach people, proclaim the good news, try to do work. Now I have this with the governor and everything, then these guidelines from the diocese. And it feels like the weight of the world was on my shoulders. And through my prayer, I was praying and walking through the rectory. And, and we don't have many pictures of the former pastors that were here in the rectory, but we have two, two of the longest serving ones. And I think it's two, though, that who have long since seen the Lord, we should pray for their intercession. One is Father Thomas. He was pastor here during the Civil War. So we had to deal with that time as well as we went through that as a nation and father Wolfstein as well. He was here during the Spanish uh, pandemic uh, over a hundred years ago. So I think the biggest thing though, is ask for their help and, and really just turn ourselves over to the Holy spirit and trust in God, because I've seen a lot of different things. People are posting everywhere on internet. And really, I think this might be the thing that defines a generation defines this parish and defines who we are as Catholics, Christians. And I think we should even more now turn ourselves over to the Lord. And maybe this is what God is trying to encourage us to do in his way, is to grow closer to him and trust in him. That even though, like I said last week, it's always darkest before the dawn, we're still not at the darkest point, it feels like, but it feels like we're getting there. We just need to turn ourselves over even more to Jesus Christ. So one of the things, though, we have to be mindful of as well, uh, we'll be posting different things, though, that the Holy Father has for us. There's certain points he wants us to pray as well, and so does the Archbishop and everything as well. We'll make sure to get that out to all of you. And one thing I think we should do for as a prayer, though, too, this as a people, because we're St. Joseph. Let us continue to pray for his intercession, continue to turn ourselves over to God, and ask for the protector of the church to watch over us, the protector of the families as well, because we need his protection more than ever as we go through these times. I think the biggest thing is let's just continue to turn ourselves over to God and trust in the Holy Spirit. And what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to close with just a prayer and everything, uh, just more of a spontaneous type. And I ask you guys, though, to remember, though, to pray for the priests as well, too. Because they feel like I do at some times, that sense of maybe despair, hopelessness, like what do I do now? They can use some words of, words of encouragement. I appreciate all that you gave me, and I, and I appreciate the cookies and the fresh bread that I didn't get to eat because my dog ate it. But him and I had a long talk about that. But the thing, though, is uh, encourage them, the deacons as well. I'm sure there's many deacons out there that are doing a lot of work. I know Deacon Ken is here as well. And I appreciate it more than ever, his help as well. So I'll keep you updated about Holy Week, and I'll keep you updated everything. But let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, as we go through this time as a people, the people of this whole world, the people here in this country, the people here in this community, this parish, We ask you to calm any fears that we have, calm any doubts we have in your mercy and love, but rather open our hearts even more to better serve you, to help our neighbor, to glorify you in everything that we do. We ask you to send your blessing upon all the medical personnel, that you protect them and guide their hands as they do your work of healing. We ask you to be with the scientists as well, as they try to figure out a cure, figure out a way to treat this so we could end this pandemic once and for all. We pray for our government leaders. We pray for unity in them, that they do the will, the, do the will of the common good of all of us, and not just of, of a good of a political party or political ideals, but rather do what's best for the people of this nation to help guide us and lead us to being whole again. And most importantly, Lord, we ask this through the intercession of St. Joseph, the protector of the church, the protector of the world now, and the protector of the family. And we ask this through the intercession of Our Lady, 
as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And know that I'll be praying for all of you, and I hope to see you all soon. God bless.